Good morning and welcome to Worship at First United Methodist Church in Gatlinburg. We're so happy you've joined us today. I've been with you um, several weeks now and I'm so happy today to welcome our friends back with us. We're staying at least six feet apart or, or farther. I've got Peggy Smith on the piano for us and Rick Glover is here. Rick is our song leader at the 8.30 service. So I'm very pleased to have them here today. And Janice Glover is uh, working uh, the lights and praying for us. <laughs> so we're, we're so happy to be together. Today is the fourth Sunday in the season of Easter, and it's known as Good Shepherd Sunday. So our prayers and scriptures will reflect that theme of Jesus as our Good Shepherd. We, we welcome you. So glad you've joined us today. May the service be a blessing to you. Our hymn for the day is For the Beauty of the Earth as we celebrate the joy of springtime. Peggy will lead us in Rick. You can hold the board. Participate. Now, our call to worship is Psalm 23, again, for Christ the Good Shepherd Sunday. And I'd like to invite you to, uh, we'll all say it together. Peggy and Janice and Rick will help us. And please uh, feel free to say it right along with us. The Lord, the Lord is my shepherd, shepherd I, I shall not want. want. He maketh, he maketh me, me to lie down, down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. 
Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Thank you. Now let us hear the scripture readings today. First from the epistle, the first letter of Peter at the second chapter. For it is a credit to you if being aware of God, you endure pain while suffering unjustly. If you endure when you are beaten for doing wrong, what credit is that? But if you endure when you do right and suffer for it, you have God's approval, for to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example, so that you should follow in his steps. When he was abused, he did not return abuse. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but he entrusted himself to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross, so that free from sins we might live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed, for you were going astray like sheep, but now you have returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. And then from the gospel lesson for this day, Jesus said, this is John at chapter 10, Jesus said, very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be, Thanks be to God. God. I enjoy seeing the photographs of uh, many of our friends on, on social media at this time of spring and we're physically distant from one another. I'm so thankful that we have photographs we can share online and or digitally. And uh, so one of my uh, clergy colleagues, Reverend Tyune Yoon, uh, is a minister in Knoxville and quite a, a talented gardener. And he posted recently uh, some of the beautiful flowers from his garden, uh, but also uh, photographed a plant that he was uh, cultivating, lamb's ear. You might be familiar with lamb's ear. Uh, it looks, uh, the shape of it is shaped sort of like a lamb's ear, and then the fuzziness of the leaf reminds you of the, the softness of the wool on the, on the little lambs and the sheep. And so uh, he had pictures of lamb's ear, but he also had a little bit of history about the usage of that plant. And I hadn't realized that a lamb's ear plant can be used medicinally and has been used probably for centuries by uh, shepherds, farmers, uh, and uh, even the soldiers, they said, out in the fields could use it as an antiseptic and uh, it would help to clot the blood of, of any cuts uh, that shepherds or soldiers might incur in their work. 
And uh, so I, it really made me reflect on this scripture this week in a different way of uh, the healing or reinforces our lessons from the Easter season. The healing of Jesus' blood and his sacrifice and his humility to come and serve us as a shepherd. And so as we think about the wounds of Jesus' hands, his feet, and his side that his passion showed us, revealed his love and God's love for all the world through his death and sacrifice, and then the new life that God gives us in Christ. We remember that he visited his disciples after the resurrection, and his resurrected body still had the imprints on the hands and the feet and his side. And so uh, a wonderful theologian, Catherine de Hook Doherty, uh, wrote a reflection about the woundedness and how we can see this in a certain way. She, she wrote, toward the end of the journey, spiritually, that we go inward, after we have met Christ and shared his cross, there is a moment of resurrection. The wounds are not healed, but they no longer hurt. We sometimes try to hide our scars. Think of the money that we spend on uh, plastic surgery or turtle mix or special creams and lotions, uh, haircuts, strategically placing bangs perhaps over a facial scar, uh, the efforts that we make, uh, maybe gloves that we wear uh, to cover up our scars. Those are just physical scars, though. Think of the emotional scars, the woundedness some of us carry that others cannot see. As we read about the earliest gathering of Christ followers, we notice the importance of seeing the scars. We're reminded of that beautiful verse from the prophet Isaiah in the 53rd chapter. By his stripes we are healed. By his stripes we are healed. And so we come today with gratitude for all that Christ has suffered for our sakes and for the sake of all the world and creation. Some translations of the Bible might say, by his wounds we are healed. Other translations might say, by his bruises we are healed. And so we think of the bruising of the world, the wounds of the world, our woundedness, our stripes, and our Savior knows these sufferings. And then the gospel lesson tells us that Jesus is the door through which we can receive God's grace, God's eternal love, God's mercy, God's healing. And so we see Jesus there in, in John's gospel as, as the shepherd, but we also see him too as the gate and the door, he says. He's the gate and the door for us. He's the shepherd. So he's everywhere in, in this field of life, drawing us close to him and drawing near to us, actively abiding with us. And that beautiful verse in John 10, I have come to give life and to give it abundantly. This is a gift we can claim in the midst of the woundedness of our world, in the woundedness of our lives, the wounding of our relationships, and we offer these to God for healing. There's a wonderful writer and mom and a cancer survivor named Mary Elizabeth Williams uh, who wrote an essay the title of which is Look at My Scars. She has a scar from brain surgery that she considers to be her badge of survival. And Mary Elizabeth's seven-year-old daughter named Beatrice was um, at school at recess time. This was after her mother had had surgery and she had learned about her mother's scar. She was out at recess playing with her friends and one of her little girlfriends had a bad scar on her cheek, the friend asked Beatrice whether the scar freaked her out. 
And Beatrice said, no, why would I be freaked out? I love you. And Mary Elizabeth, the mother, said, we shouldn't look past scars. Sometimes it's awkward for us to know that much about someone. Mary Elizabeth says, instead, look into the scars because that's where the love is. And so I just ask us today, can we see in our congregations our households of faith, the reflection of Jesus' love and our love for one another by accepting our scars. Do we need to love ourselves, our scars, and really look into them? And by doing so, can we learn more about our Savior and appreciate what He has endured and come to understand His appreciation and understanding of us. It's a wonderful gift of relationship we have with our shepherd. And so how far do we open the doors? Like Christ as the gate, Christ as the door. We want to open our doors so that no one who feels scarred by life, wounded and bruised by life, would ever feel uh, rejected or withheld from coming to worship and learning to have a relationship with God through Christ. Right now, our doors are closed because of this uh, coronavirus and wanting to maintain physical distance. And that's smart for us to do. And we bring our masks. Rick, I'm gonna, I'll put on my mask while you're singing. You put on your mask while I'm singing. <laughs> <laughs> but we wear our masks. It's so important to do what we can to protect one another. Not uh, just only ourselves, but we're also protecting one another when we're careful. But while the doors are shut, we have more of a need to open our hearts and find ways to reach out to others. So I thank all of you who are making face masks for others or uh, helping us deliver food to those who are afraid to go to the grocery store are those who cannot leave their homes. All the ways you're reaching out with phone calls and cards and prayers, it means so much to be connected in community with Christ. And so I pray to God to help us to be courageous in welcoming everyone to church, into the fellowship, into the faith, uh, the, into the holy friendship that Christ offers each of us in a world that is so need of connections. May that statement from Mary Elizabeth Williams, that's where the love is, be true about Christ's church, universal, and ours. Amen. Now today we have our prayer list and our birthdays for May. We want you to join with us as we pray together. And uh, let's see. We've turned the calendar over to a new month, the month of May. We celebrate birthdays with Curtis Oakley, with Sherry Valentine, Bob Velasic, Nancy Thompson, Dorothy Stalkup, Newman Smith, and Brandon Webster this week. So happy birthday. Many wonderful greetings to all those May birthday babies. And on our prayer list, of course, we continue to pray for all those who are suffering with the virus or those who are suffering in any way and those who are giving care to our patients, all those healthcare workers and medical researchers, um, those who have suffered unemployment during this time, who are struggling financially. Uh, we pray for safety for the frontline workers. We pray for our, our food ministry that is reaching out to so many families and it's helping us to connect with other agencies and even some neighbors here in Gatlinburg who are wanting to support us by sending us offerings and donations of food. We're, we're so appreciative. We continue our prayers for Peggy and Newman Smith's friend Danielle, who's expecting to deliver a baby soon after she's had many uh, health complications uh, during her pregnancy. So we. We continue to pray for her wellness and for the baby. And uh, continue our prayers for Lily Glover. We've been praying for Lily. Thank you. And uh, for those who feel lonely, 
or perhaps depressed during this time of uh, social isolation and physical distancing. It's a, it's a real struggle for some. And for persons in other communities and countries that might not have the resources we have for food or comforts or other amenities, uh, those who are trying to fight the virus. So these are some of our prayers today. Add them with yours as we pray to God uh, with the confidence of children of God and children of the Good Shepherd. We pray as he has taught us, our Father who Lord art in heaven, heaven hallowed be, be thy, thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come. Thy, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Now, because Peggy and Rick are here, we're going to have a very special treat. They have prayerfully uh, prepared to, uh, to offer this beautiful song for our worship this morning. It's great to be with you, and sort of. But, uh, you know, it's, it's hard to believe that just a few weeks ago, not many weeks ago at all, nobody even heard of the coronavirus. We didn't even know what it was. We were sitting here worshiping like normal, doing our normal thing, looking forward to spring, the flowers, hiking. And then all of a sudden, all that changed. So, you know, the, what we find out, though, is that God, in good times and bad times, He's always the same. He's always with us. And that's what this song is about. Whether we're on the mountaintop or whether we're deep in a valley in, in our life, God is with us. And we can trust Him. And He does love us. Life is easy when you're up on the mountain and you've got peace of mind like you've never known. But then things change and you're down in the valley. Don't lose faith for faith when you're up on the mountain but faith comes so easy when life's at its best but it's down in the valley of those trials and temptations that's when faith is really put to the test and the God on the mountain he's still God in the valley when things go wrong you know that he'll make them right and the God in the good time he's still God in the bad God in the night. Yes, the God on the mountain, He's still God in the valley. When things go wrong, you know that He'll make them right. And the God of the good time, He's still God in the bad. God of the day 
is still God in the night. God of the day, he's still God in the night. Amen. Thank you so much, Rick and Peggy. And while I'm thanking people, I want to thank Mary Alice Cox for the beautiful Easter lilies that she shared with us for the month of April. And we've used those for many of our worship services. And then today we thank Nell Douglas for adorning the altar with uh, beautiful violas and iris from her own garden. So uh, they're thinking of you uh, through their expression of worship. So thank you. Well, let us uh, receive this benediction, and then we'll hope to see you again next Sunday here uh, online and in our hearts. Let us go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. May the goodness and mercy of the shepherd follow you all the days of your life. Amen. <laughs>